We've been hyping up for a while now that we'll be starting releasing videos focusing on the Windy City Bulls, the Chicago Bulls G League affiliate, because now there are quite a few players down there that could end up playing a part, at least being role players for the Chicago Bulls, especially as we see more and more teams start developing and using the G League system really as a dev system. So we're going to talk about the two games that the Windy City Bulls have played so far, who stood out, who didn't, and what it could mean for the future of the actual Chicago Bulls. We're going to get into all that and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. What's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. And this is something different for the channel, right? So I know I don't expect these videos to really pop off or anything like that. This is more, we always say we're the number one spot, or I say we're the number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. But in my uh, two years now of doing this show, one thing that I haven't done consistently is talk about the, 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 the G League system, right? And, and talk about the players down there with it. Now, we always have a, a, a pick or something down there. Dalen Terry's down there right now, for example, playing with the Windy City Bulls. But now when you look at the added players of Adama Sinago, Onola Bittim, right, uh, down there, uh, Justin Lewis is another player that, you know, we signed as an undrafted rookie day one. And there are some other players as well that Bulls fans are hoping, wondering why they haven't been getting to the NBA level, things like that. And especially after, you know, a failed experiment like Marco Simonovic. So I figured, why not? I'm going to go ahead and start doing once a week G League update videos, and that's what this is, right? So we got two games to talk about and break down in these two games. And one of the things that I know most people are going to take away from it is first up, Dalen Terry only played nine minutes in the first game, and he got hurt. I think it, it looked like a twisted ankle, something down there. He started limping. He, he didn't play in the second game. Uh, he didn't come back in that game either. So there's something to be said with that. It hasn't been announced that anything serious, so I don't expect that it is. The difference you know, in the with them having game. ba games on back-to-back -back days, they probably figured just go ahead and let him sit. Wouldn't be surprised if Dalen Terry's back out there. That was a defensive breakdown. Let's talk about this first game. So both games were against the Iowa Wolves. So both games against the same opponent. In the first game that went down on Friday, Max Hedinger, 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 I think is how you pronounce it, Max Hedinger uh, uh, with 21 Tough points. He scored that off 6 of 12 the from the, the field, 2 of 7 from the three-point line, and 5 and of 5 the other from the free throw. He also took in 8 assists. Phil we then had Wheeler Jalen Harris with 17 assist. points. He did that, uh, also added 2 assists to that. And then Adama Sinago with 14 points, 9 rebounds, 1 assist, and 1 steal. And then the assist still came off one play, stole the ball, then immediately gave it up to a wide open player so they could get the score. Then we got Earl Lock down there. 3 of 10 from the field, 2 of 7 from the field. Three of 3 from the field, 3 of 3 from the field. He took 3 rebounds, 1 assist, 4 assists, and unfortunately 4 turnovers. Now we're going to talk about that when we spotlight him a little bit more specifically. Those turnovers and why it's starting to be kind of concerning for him and what that means for kind of his development. We're going to talk about that. Derek Faye was also chipping in 14 points. Quentin uh, Jackson Carson also chipped in. Gives it off for Wendell Moore Jr. Quick shoot. three so, in the corner. Again, the, up and good by the Bulls Miller. did not get the win. They ended up losing shoot. that game. 117 to 125 for the Iowa Wolves. But then they Bounce turned around right and to played Carton, on Carton's Saturday. Carton's going to attack anyway. One on three. Lays it off for Miller. Miller. Miller and Justin Lewis set out that second game. But standouts in this game. We had Henry Drell, who's been in our G League system for a while. I think he's, what, 23 years old. He's drawn a lot of comparisons to Max Struess uh, with just his play style, his physicality, things like that. Uh, 22 points on 9 of 19 shooting from the field, 2 of 9 from three-point range, 1 of 1 from free throw, but he also chipped in 10 rebounds, 2 assists, and 2 steals. Listen, Henry Drell, I'll talk about it more towards the bottom here, but he's been somebody who's really surprised me with this play, even in the first game that he didn't score a lot with just his understanding of the game of basketball. We'll talk about that. Adama Sinango also chipping in 18 points, going 8 of 13 from the field, and 9 rebounds as well. Max Hedengeiger as well with 17 points, 6 of 14 from the field, 5 of 9 from three-point range. He, did, he uh, also chipped in four, 4 rebounds, 4 assists, and 2 steals. And then you had Onolot B team again going 5 of 15 from the field, 2 uh, for, for 7 from three-point range, 3 rebounds, 4 assists, and again, 4 turnovers. So if we're looking at the G League, uh, you know, the play from it and what to take away from it. I want to start off with talking about Henry Drell. 23 years old, like I said, I would not be surprised if Henry Drell does end up turning into a rotational piece at the minimum at the NBA level. Some of the things that really stood out to me when it comes to Henry Drell as well is really just his poise, his understanding of when he can get his shot off, creating space in a way, right? He doesn't do it the traditional way, but he also uses his size to really get him, uh, you know, some separation, to get, you know, some some uh, buckets in the lane, things like that. 
Henry Drell is a player that I really do think, like, if we're truly trying to turn this G League system into, like, a developmental system, I really hope that Henry Drell can turn into, like I said, at the bare minimum, a rotational piece for the Chicago Bulls. Not saying that he is going to turn into, like, a big-time piece or anything like that, but I think if you developing him and you seeing the raw skills that he has, at the end of the day, that shooting is something that legit he can build off of, and he's no slouch with, with dribbling as well or passing, and he's an active rebounder on top of all of that. Again, it's not perfect, right? And it is G League competition, so make sure anything that I say here, we're prefacing as, of course, it's G League, right? We want to preface it with that. This is G League competition, so definitely put a focus on that, but he's just, he has some of those raw skills that you really look at and you say, a really good to great coach at the NBA level, which we know the Bulls don't have at that main level, but can really use this guy. And so, you know, when you hear those Max Struess comparisons for him, it's ones that I look at and I say, hey, it's not too far off, right? I don't think. So look at look at Henry Drell with that. Now, Max Hedengeiger as well is another player that he's 26, so he's a little bit older. I don't know if it's there for him at the NBA level, but this is another guy who I think I would not be surprised if a team maybe takes a shot at him at the back end of the bench eventually. He may always stay a two-way contract player, maybe be one of those players that eventually gets in a game and has a, a solid night, something like that. But these are guys that really seem poised and understand what they can do out there on the court at the G League level. But then let's get into some of the guys that we really do hope that have a future with the actual Chicago Bulls. And the first one that I want to talk about is Adama Sinago. Listen, is it perfect? No. Is it pretty? No. Does he have some footwork issues? Yes. Is the speed of the game going to be something that could absolutely get to him? Yes. But Adama Sinago, if nothing else, his strength, his physicality, and his rebound, I can absolutely see him turning into, at the bare minimum, a back-of-the-bench piece for the Chicago, for, for any NBA team, but hopefully for the Chicago Bulls. Is he Andre Drummond as far as switchability? No. Is he Andre Drummond as far as athleticism? No. But you know what Adama Sinago is? He's a smart player. And he understands how to use his body and his length, right? He's not the tallest player, but he it does have length to get to the rim. And he doesn't try to do too much. He lets the game come to him. And we saw this a little bit at, in Summer League as well. Through two games so far, Adama Sinago is averaging like 16 points per game and nine and a half rebounds and like one and a half uh, assists as well. Like, he again, it's not perfect. It is G League competition. But you start seeing the things of why the Chicago Bulls went out and signed him as an undrafted rookie right away, right? This is a guy who, if you can get up to the speed of the game, uh, I think that you can find something in him to really, like I said, back into the bench, uh, maybe in some specialty lineups, maybe when you just need, like, a big rebound and somebody who can just put a body on somebody. Those are things. The thing that I think that you most want to look at for Adama Sinago over the course of this G League season is how does he adapt defensively, right? Pick and roll, not, not terrible for him, but not great for him yet, again, Limited sample size. We're talking about two G League games at that, right? But, you know, those are some things that you want to look. But he's a smart basketball player. And I think if you have a point guard that can really, you know, do some things as far as, like, pick and rolls and things like that and get him the ball when he's in position and has kind of that inside edge on somebody, he's somebody who can score a little bit at the NBA level. Again, I'm not saying huge or anything like that, but the rebounding. The rebounding and, and, and timing on block shots, if that can come along for him a little bit better. He, he was close to a few blocks, didn't quite get them, but if you can get him closer to that, I look at Adama Sinago as a guy that, hey, like I said, if you're talking about using your G League affiliate, affiliate really as a developmental league, there's enough raw there with, with, with Adama Sinago to where you may be able to turn him to the back end of the bench player, but we'll see that. Again, this is one G League game. Not, I don't want to put too much stock into it, but that's kind of my, my mindset coming off these two games. And then Earl Lott bit him. Now, the reason why I want to talk about the team, and I've waited to the end of the show to talk about it, I've alluded a little bit to it. We talked about some things earlier. But one of the big reasons that I do want to talk about it is because a lot of Bulls fans have been asking, why isn't the team in a game? Why isn't it? We need a shooting. We need this. We need that, right? And one thing that you can see from the team, right? He's gone 2 of 7 in one game from three point range. He's at 2 of 7 in both games. So right now, he's 4 of 14 um, from the three point range. And that is supposed to be one of his best skills is being able to shoot the three, and we're seeing that much like I thought, right? The physicality of the of the of this version of basketball is something he's having a little difficulty with right now. Am I saying that he's, he's not going to be able to figure it out? No, I'm not saying that because he still has a quick release. He's not afraid, but going 4-14, and what a lot of Bulls fans have been asking is, can he come in and be a three-point shooter? Why aren't we using him and we need more three-point shots? This is why 
the team is in the G League, and you're seeing that in these two games so far. The physicality is getting to him in both his shots and his turnovers. Averaging four turnovers per game is big, right? And so that points to a combination of the physicality and understanding the length as well. So one of the things when you are playing and, and watching kind of EuroLeague basketball, you will see like not you, every team doesn't have the length that you see on most NBA teams. And so the team getting that passing timing down, right, is going to be important for him at the next level because he is going to get picked off. Now, could he come in as just a let me just run off a bunch of screen shooter right away? Possibly because then you're limiting the physical aspect that can get him thrown off his game. But again, even his field goal percentage hasn't been too amazing yet um, in the game at all. So right now he's shooting a, a combined 7 of 25 from the field. So again, it's it's first two uh, NBA G League games, or G League, not NBA G League, but G League games for him. I do expect him to kind of adapt, right? But that is why you're seeing the team down in the G League rather than at the NBA level right away. He does need to adjust to that physicality. And in, in, in the G League, physicality is even less than what you'll see at the NBA level, right? So that's kind of some of the things you're looking at from, from Batim to kind of get him acclimated in his first year coming over to the United States. So there's something to be said with that. But again, some promising things. That release is quick. He has no fear on getting that release off. The, the physicality thing is something that's limited him right now on the offensive side and defensive side a little bit. But again, those are things that I do think he's a pro. He's I think he's going to be able to overcome that, but it is an adjustment period. And I think that's one of the biggest things to look at for. Now, as far as some of the concerns, Dale and Terry going down with injury, and even before he got out that game, he didn't look amazing. But, again, it was nine minutes, so it's not really much you can take away from it. And then Julian uh, uh, Phillips, no, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Justin Lewis as well. Like, just, again, we, we know we signed him, and a lot of people were really excited because he does have a raw skill set. And he has a skill set that you can see being utilized at the NBA level, but whether it's still him kind of getting over the ACL injury, things like that, he didn't really have kind of that. One thing that I've noticed in the two summer leagues with Justin Lewis, right, and even in some of the G League games last season, well, he didn't play many G League games last season, uh, but uh, that I noticed with him is that the intelligence and switching, right, and in pick and roll defense, we, aren't really, we haven't really seen that in the one game that he played in, but again, it's one game, he's coming off an ACL injury, so maybe there's some things to be said about that, but those are kind of my takeaways. Again, two G League games down. We got more to go. I'll be bringing this episode to you guys once a week. Just focus on the Windy City Bulls. So let me know what you guys think down below. What else would you like as we're trying to kind of figure out how to make this different from the regular videos on the channel? Please let me know what you guys think on all that down below. As always, thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you guys are following the channel at Bull Central Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns. BullsCentralPod at gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail, Especially for the if it's just for the Windy City Breeze or if it's for the Bulls overall, the Windy City Bulls or if it's for the uh the 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 Chicago Bulls overall, the number to do so, 773-270-2799. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related, thanks to you guys. And like I liked in every episode on, go Bulls. Love you guys. See red if you can, y'all. Peace. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Break, break, media. media.